Is your relationship a lot more about French fries than French kissing? This is very comfortable, you know. I need to feel pretty, I need to feel sexy. Do you and your honey prefer to take out rather than make out? 10 takeaway menus. Superstar nutritionist Jillian McKeith is on a mission to help this woman get her groove back. I can't even see past my stomach. This is a desperate fight for the health and happiness of one young woman. I'm not going to sit here and have somebody like yourself put me and her down. But is it all too little, too late? I need help because I think I'm going to die. If I continue like this, I'll be dead in a few years. Frances is more than 100 pounds overweight, and her health is hanging in the balance. But deep inside, there's a sexy, vivacious woman. I've got to find her before it's too late. Tipping the scales at 330 pounds, 28-year-old Frances is a food felon. When I'm done this cookie, pass me the chips. Her daily diet is crammed with chips, soaked in sweets, and it's takeout for every single meal. Here's dinner. Frances's portly partner in crime is her fiance, Stuart. This couch potato couple can't even cuddle without getting a cramp. I gotta get up. My legs fall asleep. Stuart and I aren't that intimate. Intimacy for Francis and I is fairly uncomfortable. And the last time we did anything, he just felt like he was gonna have a heart attack. But her culinary crimes are nothing new. Ever since I was about six or seven, I have always been the biggest girl in class. It's not a good feeling, right? And being the biggest girl, you get made fun of. Her constant childhood companions were food and her 500-pound dad, Elmer. Oh, really? Yeah. They bond over making the family's favorite food together, junk buns. The whole family loves them. But it's not just bad eating habits that run in this family. You know, my father had his first heart attack at the age of 22, and I worry about him. Hi, Dad. I have to call my dad every day and tell him I love him, because I'm afraid tomorrow when I wake up, he's not going to be here. Come up on this one, please. This bulging bride-to-be wants to wow her groom when she walks down the aisle. We always can order a bigger size for you. I want him to look at me on our wedding day and be like, I'm marrying her. She's so beautiful. And I don't think he's going to do that. Is Frances really ready to change her life? I'm trapped in this body, and I want out now. Nutritionist Jillian McKeith has just eight weeks to get Frances to face the facts about food and fitness. Frances? Jillian McKeith? What Hi, is Jillian. this? Um, what is this? Breakfast? When I walked into Frances's condo, she was eating some God only knows concoction between bread, and I thought, what is she playing at? I do need to see what's in your kitchen. Okay. Ow! Oh. There. Well, you don't need actual food if all you eat is takeout. Why do you have all these sauces in here? I guess to add to my takeaways. You add them to your takeaways. Ah, oh. one, two, three. That's why her fridge has no food in it. Ten takeaway menus. You don't know what's in there. Well, the sodium glutamate, for example, MSG, it makes you want to have more. When uh, Jillian told me that MSG, I had no idea it was related to the constant urge to eat. So I want to show you something that can be a big wake-up call for you that can just kick you into touch. That's disgusting. Would you sit down and eat 65 slices of bacon in a week? And would you sit down to 263 slices of bacon in a month? No. But you are. When Jillian pointed out how much fat I was eating in a month with that mountain of bacon, and no wonder I'm the size that I am. Shockingly, Francis eats an average of 3,000 calories every day. The pressure that you're putting on your heart, and you will end up just like your dad. I'm doing this not to make you cry. I want you to realize what you are doing to your body. I want to make a point, and I want you to change, and I want you to change now. Throw away. All the rubbish in this kitchen. Come on, chuck them in. Get in there. Just rip them up for good measure. And get this stuff. Come on, move along, Francis. Hurry up. It was pretty symbolic. It's trash, it's garbage, it's gone. Now we get to turn over a whole new leaf. Francis needs to understand the effect all that extra weight is having on her health if she's ever going to make the commitment to long-term change. I have to get her back to my clinic to show her the proof however difficult that is for her to take. So 
So Francis, now comes the moment where you're going to take your life back. And you're going to start with ditching that robe. Yeah, I'm really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> when I had to take the robe off in front of Jillian, it made me feel really vulnerable. So just throw it off. When Frances took her robe off, I thought, oh my God. I was shocked beyond anything that I thought possible. At 330 pounds, Frances is morbidly obese. She suffers from chronic headaches, irregular periods, and has a family history of high blood pressure and heart disease. Her health is in grave danger. This is serious abuse of a body. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think you've done that? I don't know, just burying my emotions. What's the worst emotion you're trying to bury? Unacceptance. I feel almost like I'm different than everybody else. And I, I don't get to go shopping with the girls. You know, and you sit there and you look at them and they're so gorgeous. And I look at myself. And... Frances has been miserable <laughs> since she was a child and she has literally eaten every feeling and emotion with bad food. You're putting such pressure everywhere. You've got really prominent veins. Have you noticed that? Yeah. There's so much pressure on Frances's heart and circulatory system that the veins are literally oozing through her skin. You've got stretch marks everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> a sign of the mineral zinc being deficient. But another thing, when you're low in zinc, your sense of taste and smell is shot to pieces. Really? What are your periods like? Um, sometimes not existent. I had um, a period for a year that they didn't show up, then they were here for eight months straight. They wouldn't go away. And painful. Very. Yeah. Stick your tongue out, let's see. Now, all this yellow mucky coating is suggesting a lot of toxicity in the body. Bad breath. Yeah. <laughs> and where do you think halitosis comes from? The stomach. It's coming from here. It's toxemia here. Do you ever get headaches? Yeah. I can go through like a whole bottle of ibuprofen in less than a month. In the eight weeks, we'll make headway. This is going to take a lot longer than eight weeks. And I need to know you're on board way past eight weeks. I'm on board for the rest of my life. At stake for Frances is life or death as a young woman. Frances didn't get like this alone. Her fiance Stuart needs to decide if he's going to continue to be part of the problem or become part of the solution. Looking at you, you really have a problem with weight. Yeah. My concern is how on earth are you going to be able to help Francis when you are in a bit of a state yourself? I can tell you that um, I'm tired of eating the type of food that we're eating. And I, I do generally want to change. You want to change? Myself, yes. You do? OK. Yes. Can you do some shopping? Yep. OK, good. I'd like you to shop for the vegetables and the fruits and some of the things on the plan. All I right. want you chopping the vegetables, and I want you cleaning the juicer. All right. It's my way or the highway? I got it. Let's hope so, because Frances is about to take in her new non-takeout menu. I'm starting you out with avocados. Oh, nice. It's also known as the love apple. Really? Yeah, so you <laughs> never know. It might just help you out. Fast food. Bananas. Let's see how quickly you can get to a banana. You just peel it. Right. Yeah. And it's a good source of B6, a preventative against water retention and edema and bloating. You know, it took me three seconds to peel a banana. It would take me a half an hour to get in my car and go through a drive through If you're feeling low, which I know you have been, mango. There's a real feeling of contentment after eating a mango. And the fact that it contains natural mood elevators, I expect you to be happy all the time. I calculated that you spend over $500 a week on your takeouts. And all you've got to show for it is a big fat belly and ill health. Jillian's new menu adds up to a very sexy weekly saving of $365. I can live with this. <laughs> Francis, all you eat are sugary processed foods. Your bowel movements are smelly. You've got bad breath, gas, and bloating. Toxic. So you're going to clean out. Oh, I just wanted to mention, chewing on parsley, there you go, is excellent for bad breath. Really? Although the source of the bad breath is coming from here. But nonetheless, you don't want to whiff it at people. So could you chew that in between meals, please? Sure. I think of Francis' colon like a wasteland, and that's what the juicing's all about. Okay. 
It's not that bad. It actually adds a little bit of zip from the ginger. Right. So it actually like really <laughs> almost makes me happy to drink. <laughs> she loved it. Your call on is saying thank you. Better than a poutine? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't want to hear that word again. No more poutine, <laughs> just healthy food, right? <laughs> you got it, sister. It's week two and Francis is gung-ho about Jillian's plan. I make all the grocery lists now, so I'm go through the meal plan, write out what we need. Stuart goes and picks it up. He cuts all the vegetables. I juice it. Then move the juicer aside. Then he's the one who cleans it. Oh. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Hmm, not sure if that was quite the idea. One thing Francis will have to do is exercise. Walking through there, it was really intimidating, looking at all the machines and everybody around. They all look good, <laughs> and I don't. And I want to be that. And things aren't much easier at home. Fast food fanatic Francis is feeling the effects of eating real food for a change. The first few days of Jillian's diet plan were really tough. Uh, my stomach was sick. I felt really faint. I was having a lot of trouble. And looking in the fridge ain't gonna make her feel any better. It's not what I'm craving. I'm craving salt, flavor, anything other than vegetables. Frances's old friend, the junk food, is a constant temptation. If she wants burger and fries, she can have it, but only if it's Gillian McKeith approved. So what we have here, Frances, is the junk list bun. Okay. We're using chickpeas today, but you could actually use any bean. Okay. okay. So start mashing. Mash, mash. This is instead of going to the gym. <laughs> now put in the brown rice. Now chuck the squash in. Okay. Now get the carrots in. Shallots. And I put a little bit of miso liquid in. Okay. Making the junkless buns actually takes less time than making the junk buns. <laughs> so we've got a junkless bun, sweet potato wedges on a bed of kale with avocado creamy sauce. <laughs> Heaven is about to arrive. Mm. It just all marries together really beautifully, all the flavors. Yeah, that is really good. It was really surprising, and I'm actually glad she gave that recipe to me. Jillian wanted fiance Stuart on board with the plan, and boy is he ever. Stuart's adapting really well to the diet. In fact, I think he's adapting more than I am. He's cutting the vegetables, he's doing the shopping, he's installing things throughout the house. In fact, he's doing so well that Francis feels left behind. Stuart, wait up. Come on. And a little jealous. Wow, that looks really good on you. Yeah, I'm getting there. It's not fair, you're losing weight quicker than I am. And we're doing everything the same. Upset that fiance Stuart is losing the weight, Frances is losing her faith. I can't take it anymore. I need something to eat. I just, I want fries. I'm had enough. Oh, I'm not going to go with you. Oh, I'm going to go without you then. I'll support Frances if she's sticking to the yeah. plan. But if she's just going to cheat, then I'm not going to support that. When I was walking up to the restaurant, I was like all gung ho. You know, final straw, that's it. I'm just going to do it, get it over with. And then I went to go and enter. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Going back that route is just not worth the pain and suffering that I was going through. It may not be a salty snack, but Stuart's come up with what she's really craving. Francis, I know this is hard, but I believe in you and I believe that you can do this and get to the other side. And you'll have some trouble here and there, but I'll be here for you. And I'm really proud of how far you've come so far. I love you and I'm looking <laughs> forward to a, a long and healthy life with you. It's really a good time to hear that from him, uh, especially from Stuart. I've had a last week has been really, really tough for me. I just didn't realize he, you know, believed in me that much. For Frances to truly change her life, she needs the support of her heavyweight dad. Yeah, get you to grade the rest of that cheese up. He's come for a visit, and with dad come the junk buns. Hey, you do the sprinkle on the rock. She's worried about facing him alone, so she's calling in Jillian for reinforcement. For my dad to support me, get on board, do the diet with me, get healthy so that you'll live longer. Francis's dad is a walking time bomb. At 500 pounds, his inability to take control of his health is having a negative impact on his daughter. I need him to face the truth now. 
So, this kind of thing does not exist in her world anymore, okay? And you can't get into a situation like this unless you absolutely hate yourself and feel worthless. Because she felt she didn't deserve anything decent inside her body. And she'd never been taught or educated in any way about food that is decent. And I don't know what your role in this was, but it had to be pretty big. I mean, my God. Okay, stop, stop, yeah. I'm done. No, I'm not putting up with this. Here, move that other side. I really touched a nerve and he just wasn't having any of it. I'm not gonna sit here and have somebody like yourself put me and her down. I'm not gonna do this. She does need you to support her. She has my support, dear. Well, then she sit really down. Does. No, I'm not sitting down. Not when you're gonna put me or her down in front of me. Okay, I'm not, I don't care. I didn't put you down. You're misinterpreting you are what putting we're me saying. Down. You're putting her I'm down. I'm trying down. to understand how you ended up like this. And if you won't talk to me about it, how are we ever going to know I'm how not to talk. change no, it? No, not when you talk to me like that. I'm out of here. Elmer definitely felt that it was a personal attack because he does, somewhere inside of him, feel responsible for Francis. So he's just walked out. So how do you feel now? Like I heard him. You are going to have to do this without him because he's not going to help you. I, I think he's just given up on himself. I want him to eventually come around and ask for that help, ask somebody to save his life. He's had how many heart attacks has he had? I think 17 now. He's not willing to change. Is that the life you want for yourself? No, but I also don't want to lose him. And Francis has got to finally draw a line in the sand and say enough is enough, this is my life. I get one chance at it, and I'm going to live it my way. It's five weeks in, and Frances is learning to live with the plan and to love it. She dances up an appetite before every meal and fends off the munchies with healthy snacks. And to squeeze in more exercise, she staked out the furthest spot in the parking lot. With her newfound energy and confidence, Frances is taking another crack at the gym. This time, with some professional help. So deep breath in as you bring it in, and exhale as you push. It was great to have somebody standing there saying, okay, do this, do this, and making sure that it's done correctly. That actually looks very, very strong there. It feels much better to be able to do the workout. I feel more confident to get through this. And relax. Romance is back on the agenda. Francis and Stuart are sharing snacks and smooching while they stroll. To keep the heat simmering, Jillian's arranged for a special surprise, a pre-wedding dance class. So the men will bring Lady close to the dance position, close, right there. Okay. And here we go. Left thumb up. One, two, three. To be able to dance with Stuart and have my arms around him is something we've never really gotten to do. We've always had trouble cuddling or holding each other. So to have that today, it was great. Dance. <laughs> Do, Francis. Yes, you can. Okay, right? <laughs> you lead, not me. I hope that we can continue dancing and doing things together as a couple to bring us closer. <laughs> With the end of the challenge in sight, it's time for Francis to show off her newfound skills in the kitchen. A celebratory dinner with friends is on the menu. A menu with Julian food only, of course. It feels really great to have all my friends here uh, to share in a healthy meal. So proud of you, Francis, with all these uh, healthy choices. We're all eating healthier too now because of you, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is a group of my friends that I want to be with them when they get to go shopping. They get to wear really pretty clothes. They look amazing in everything, and I'm getting there. After eight weeks of Jillian McKeith's regimen of healthy eating and exercise, has bulging bride-to-be Frances eaten herself sexy? By following Jillian's plan, Frances is three dress sizes smaller. She's trimmed a fantastic 12 inches off her waist and six inches off her hips. And she's fallen below the 300 pound mark for the first time in years. Look at you. I know. <laughs> Francis has shrunk. A person has disappeared. And you've probably made one of the biggest turnarounds in a person's life that one could ever make. I mean, you've literally saved your life. Oh, yeah. And I thought that that boyfriend of yours wasn't going to do it. And he surprised me. Actually, he's been pushing me all the way through. <laughs> what about your dad? What's he saying? My dad's OK. He's really proud of me. I keep updating him on how much weight I've lost. And he's really happy. Now, your self-image when I first met you was just atrocious. So where are we now with all that? Um, now I can't stop looking in the mirror. So 
sexy and Francis in the same sentence. I feel really sexy. I have confidence. I feel like I can walk down the street and somebody will turn around and whistle at me. So. <laughs> Francis feels sexy. She's got a confidence and an aura about her that she never had before. All right, you go and see Stuart, OK? All right. Thank you, Gillian. Okay, bye. I'm very proud of how Francis has done over the past eight weeks. I'm excited, I'm nervous, and I can't wait to see her. Wow. Well, you look really good. It's awesome. Thank you. These are for you. Thanks. Well, I'm really proud of you. You've really done really well. It's thanks to you. You, you held my hands through it. You pushed me. I don't want to go back to how we, <laughs> we're living. <laughs> For him to look at me without having any words, it's, it's what I've always wanted. Eight weeks ago, Frances felt hopeless. Her weight and her health were out of control. With my help and her own hard work, she's finally turned a corner. She feels great and she looks even better. She's eaten herself sexy. So I've lost 50 pounds and uh, there's no reason to stop now. So we've changed the way that we think about food and the way that we live our lives drastically. This has brought us closer together. We, we go to the gym together, we walk together. We have a long way to go, but we're feeling so much better now. We have more energy.